name of the Father, of Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. And our topic today is a little bit, maybe uh, I never thought of it. Um, can we, can the Holy Spirit be taken from us? Uh, because we, we really uh, think that, um, because, you know, the Protestant like that question, which is, uh, if you know about Hebrews 10 and Hebrews 6, you know, can we lose our salvation? And, and you can do it, whatever or your opinion is. But we're going to read some Bible verse because this is really what you should really hold on is you, the Holy Spirit of God in you. But in the beginning of my thoughts, is like Jesus said to the disciple, if I, uh, in John 3, he said, if I have told you earthly things and you believe not, how shall you believe if I'll tell you about heavenly things? He was saying that to Nicodemus. So he's talking about the spiritual birth and being born again from the, the, the spirit and, and all these heavenly things. And he was talking about them that are uh, earthly things. What, how much more if I talk to you about the things, uh, heavenly things. So no matter what we think about the, uh, we know in the Bible, we can discover that I didn't know much of all, you know, like really I need uh, Sharon, we're speaking today about a topic which, uh, so you don't miss it. What is it? Um, can can the Holy like... Spirit, can, can the Holy Spirit be taken from us, from you, from me? Can the Holy Spirit ta be taken? Because all we know about, uh, you know, the many preachers who preach about salvation cannot be lost. When you're saved, you're saved forever. But today, this is different topic, and, and probably this is where um, it's not tackled. So, And then Jesus was saying to the disciple, um, to, to, not to the disciple, sorry, to Nicodemus, uh, I was talking to you about the earthly thing, and you didn't believe how much if I'll talk to you about the heavenly things. Even with the things that we think we know, uh, Jesus calling them earthly things. So there is much more of things that we do not know, even in the word of God, and it's unrevealed to us. So this is the earthly things, and that's the heavenly thing. The thing is, where are you from uh, uh, these two places? Are you living always bringing your God down to your problems, to your life, to the things which is concerning you? Or you're letting the spirit of God elevate you to the spirit uh, things and all the things of the heavenly realm. And these are the things which make you more uh, uh, interested in. So that's a different level of spiritual life and spiritual children of life of, of God, two different kinds. Your heavenly concern or your concern about having good life here on earth even a uh, spiritual good life. Well, Jesus said something interesting too, that uh, most people, they said that the light has come to the world, but people rejected him because their, their, their works was evil. This is the judgment. And he called it that the judgment, uh, that the light has come into the world and men love the darkness rather than the light because their deed was evil. Men and women like, you know, the dark side, you know, like the, the lower picture, witchcraft, uh, uh, all, all you name it, you know, all the dark things, they prefer them. If you have like a movie with uh, things which are really unknown, whatever, can you please tell Sonia to open her, her screen? Ftahik screen bitaatik, Sonia. We don't reject the devil, but we reject God and we reject his will. The light come to the world, come to people, and the people prefer the darkness because their works is evil. And the end of it is like people like that. And you will think that these people are the one that we evangelize in the street and we run after them to let them know about the gospel. But sadly is like many of those people are going to be um, the rejected one from the, the, the same face that we are in. Uh, if you don't believe me, look at the Matthew 5. Matthew 5 has said 5 entered and 5 didn't enter. 
So many of the ones who are thinking they are in the faith, they're going to end up into that place. Now here is the word he's giving us a very, very important um, Bible uh, wisdom, you know, that we listen to it. Luke said, uh, take heed, therefore, how you hear. The internet, of course, is full of teaching. YouTube makes you very lazy to go and dig deep in the word of God. And you take the thoughts of this one and that one and this one and that one. Make you lazy. You're not able really to read. And whatever they say to you, it's, it's unsaid or new to your ears. You love it and you get impressed by it. But be careful because, you know, it's the same way that, that Eve was deceived and Adam took the, the, the forbidden truth or forbidden uh, fruit. We can do that, you know, be, be, take heed, be careful how you hear. And when the word of God come to you and you think, oh, it's for someone else. This is for the sinners. This is because we're preachers. We think we're safe. We're good. And, and our life go corrupted without us realizing that. So my question again, can the Holy Spirit be taken from you? Quickly, everyone say uh, yes or no. Pastor Paul? No. Tonya said no. no. Pastor Paul? Pastor Alfie? Sharon? No answer. Okay. Where here is in the Psalm 51, we like to pray that always, uh, cast me not out from your presence, O good, and take not your yes. Holy Spirit from me. So what is that saying to you? Take not, this is 51. That's a Psalm that of uh, repentance. We pray it always. And the Arabic, it means like, take him like this. Not take him like this. <laughs> That's Sonia can tell you that Tanzao is not a gentle taking. That's the Arabic word for it. And the picture here, you know, the spirit of God was taken from them and they were kissed out of the presence mm -hmm. of God. So think twice. It cannot what... be taken, but it, it, it according to our deeds or beliefs or, or working uh, naturally in our life, we can make it, uh, you know, we can make it sad, we can. Uh, uh, to see, you can make it. Um, well, well that's what alive. you think. That's what you think. But when you read a verse like this, there's no joke about it. And I show you even more. Uh, because really, really, we have to see what how we're walking with the Lord. And 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 my preaching was uh, was about to go on the direction of should we really serve God? Is it important? Shukran, <laughs> right, okay. Thank you, Nasi. Right. But we have here uh, another beautiful, uh, Pastor Alfie was mentioning the other day, and the Lord said in Genesis 6, my spirit shall not always strive with men. Mm. And the spirit of God is really here, like grief, like Sonia said, doesn't mean that he was taken off. But look at this dangerous Bible verse. That's dangerous, very dangerous. And please don't take it as from the Old Testament and New Testament and all that, but we can find. But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Depart departed is not joke. And an evil spirit from the, the Lord troubled him. Because the spirit realm, when it's open, you cannot leave it like that and, you know, uh, whatever. When you're a spirit-filled person or whenever there is opening to the spirit realm, something should be filling that place. So if the spirit of the Lord departs, that's even more serious than a person not to be born of the spirit. The evil spirit and, and, and it will trouble the person and, and see the next verse, which is even more worse. And Saul's servant said unto him, behold, an evil spirit from God, mm -hmm. the spirit coming from God, an evil spirit was uh, hitting him and it was from God. Those things can make us really um, check. You know, people talk all the time about one save or always save, whatever. But how about the Holy Spirit? Can the Holy Spirit be taken from you? Need a little bit of more thoughts. We have the story very familiar of David, the king, when he commit adultery and prepare indirectly for the death of the husband. of And, and, and you know, you have Nathan, the, the prophet. He came and, and faced him. 
uh, I believe that all uh, this story is known. And because of that event, that word was said by Dave, by David into the um, the psalm. Cast not, do not cast me out of your presence. And you, oh God, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Because he's probably, you can imagine that he's been in a place of very, very sad place, very unable to connect with God. He go pray, he do whatever. He, he play his harp, he play the music and all of this, but his heart was not connecting with God in a way to make him feel really um, uh, satisfied as before because he sinned against God. What he did, you know, stealing the wife of someone and preparing for him. His death was not something small. And, and what was the Lord saying? Um, and when the morning was passed, um, David sent uh, and fetched her. He took the wife to his wife, and she became his wife and bare him his a son. But the, the, the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. So God will, uh, you do something like sometimes like this, and you feel like God is displeased and he will, uh, uh, what was it? But then when Nathan went to him and everyone should have a Nathan. But problem is we don't listen to our Nathans. Who are Nathan in your life? It's a person, a priest, a pastor, a good friend, religious person who come and talk to your life about things. You should be careful of this or that. And you ignore or you acknowledge. David didn't ignore. Saul did ignore. That's the difference between them. He, he did, so instantly said, I sin to the Lord, you know? And, and then the Lord said to him, I, I have sins against the Lord. And Nathan said, and the Lord also has put away that, that sin. You shall not die. He took his death. So it could go even to spiritual or even physical death. Because penalty when it came on soul was not only spiritual, Saul was receiving his penalty of death and his children because he consulted that um, witch lady. After he killed all the witches over the land and cleaned the land. But sometimes, you, don't, you know, a little bit of a small thing, it's not small, but it's very ugly in the sight of the Lord. And it does not come from one day. It does from you playing stupid or playing with God for a while and think, Still have the blood of Jesus. It's all it takes. I'm just going to do whatever. And you go into a place where you cannot really save yourself. And then he said here, restore me, O Lord. That's the same David on that same psalm. And I believe that kind of prayer of that psalm is because God hide his face from him. Do not hide your face and let your spirit do not leave me. Um, uh, that cry, it's from a deep person who really was uh, one of the elect, was one of the favorite of the Lord in whole the book. So here is store is all there. There is water and everybody is all dark. It's not, it's not, it's tasteful. Your spiritual life is not bright. It's not really joyful like you used to be with the Lord. That jump and joy was in your People can see the joy on your face. It's not anymore. You need to be restored to the joy of my salvation. A jumping of joy, you know. And now I'm just reading my Bible and I cannot connect. I, I pray, I go to the church like a robot. I do this, I do that. I tithe, I, I try to be nice. But something in you is not right. Something in you is not right. And the more you ignore it, the more it's going to bring this. And here is the two favorite, uh, not favorite, the two uh, hurtful Bible verse, uh, Hebrew 6 and Hebrew 10. Hebrew 6, 6 is say, those people who fall away after they, they tasted all the good things, to renew them unto repentance, seeing they crucify themselves, the Son of God afresh, they crucify him again. And, and of course, it's not going to happen. And, and put, uh, put him into an open shame. Can you imagine the shame that Jesus had and you want him to go for it again? And the other one, which is very, very horrible in, in 10, and it say, oh, how much sore punishment support those people shall uh, he, uh, he be so worthy that they have trodden, means walk over the foot, un, uh, underfoot the son of God. 
You put Jesus and you walked under him with your feet and has counted the blood of the, crown, uh, the covenant uh, where is was sanctified and unholy. You make the blood of the covenant unholy. You walked over Christ and even worse and has despised despite unto the spirit of grace. Is dara uh, I don't know if is dara and 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 uh, despite is the same meaning, but is dara it means like you really um, I don't know how to describe, but I don't think despite is strong enough. When you despise someone into is dara, yani, you look at him as he's like really like nothing. And we're talking about the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Living God. Do you think he's gonna leave? Jesus said to the Jews who believe in him, abide in one. The only thing who can save you is abide to the word. You remember that picture of uh, the apple? Be careful. Because when you're a sinner into that stage of being separated from God, like that year or I don't know how long uh, with David, you just fog every preaching coming to you. Take the part which is okay with your life, which are really do not make you uh, crying with your tears or feel, nah, I'm a child of God. Why should I be doing this? Why I don't have uh, uh, the joy like before, Lord. And, and you scream, you know, you go and check heaven. I'm not happy. What happened? Tell me what I did I wrong or can I change it? Tell me, Lord. But don't be, uh, you know, uh, quiet and, and, and feel it's okay. It's not okay. And, and the Lord said, abide in my word. If you abide in my word, you are my disciple indeed. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So don't go and get a teaching which is on you. And make you feel it's okay what you're doing. That dull spirit was in you. The Holy Spirit was dormant in you and unhappy and unrejoicing. And continue to think, yeah, it's going to be okay. More and more we can find Bible verse about that. But the topic that we are talking about, how can we recover uh, if we are in a stage or another of this? And it all is start by a sorry that you didn't say. Because I believe that um, this is a person who's saved. We're talking about you, the spirit will be taken of you. It means you already saved. You already had the spirit of God in you. And then the spirit can be taken of you. But it starts by sorry. Sorry. And I didn't really know how important that word sorry to the Lord. And sorry to the fellow uh, men. Um, the guy was in the clinic the other day, he's 84, whatever, you know, very uh, high position in Australia and whatever. And, and he said to me, he's a Catholic, and he said to me, I confess to God. I said, yeah, 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 confess to God. But if you uh, rape someone, you confess to God or you go confess to the person that you, you steal his rights or whatever, you, you uh, ruin his reputation, whatever. Is this sorry, God? You think it's okay? Or go, go ten Mary on your knees or whatever and ten Mary uh, a father who art in heaven and you'll be okay. No, there is things that should be dealt with, you know. And it's all who is stopping your life is a sorry. And I really didn't know that that word is very important for God. And in the group where we minister, we usually start our meeting, I repent of my sin. Jesus died for me and we make the confession. So if anyone is among us in heaven is when all of us pray that prayer. I repent of my sin. And, and Protestants don't think, you know, you don't need repenting of sin because you repent once and you have saved once and all this once uh, that they believe in. Uh, until I knew recently that one of the group, which is one of the believers, I don't know her, but she quit because of this. She don't want to say that prayer, I repent, I'm sorry. And I've seen in the internet when I'm researching, these women get mad of their husband when say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry for everything, and they don't really mean it. But I'm telling you, if God Almighty need that word out of your mouth, how much more you should go and tell it to your fellow men, or fellow women. Um, 
So dear God, give me the courage to say, I'm sorry when I hurt someone and the wisdom not to do it again. I am sorry, please forgive me. So between you receiving the peace and the forgiveness of God, I mean like a person who killed a, a child of someone and he went to the prison, long life. Sorry, Lord, I killed that child. I was drunk and do you think it's enough? You should receive. So why is it not enough to go for the, the, the forgiveness of God in, alone? Because there is a condition for your salvation. And please, all the family of Protestants, look at that condition. And don't think you have it all and make the salvation very easy. And people go sinner and sinner and sinner and die and dull and they have conscious dead. And they still think you are preparing for the army of the five version of the foolish. But pre please remember this. When we pray every day on the, uh, you know, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, and then forgive us as we forgive, it is conditional. You will not be forgiven. The blood of Jesus cannot work on your life. Unforgiven. Because you didn't forget, forgive us as we forgive to others. You come, someone hurts you, you forgive them. You find peace with that person and say to him, sorry, if you are the offending person. The equation is two, you're offended or, I mean, you are the one who sin against your brother or sin against you. Forgive us as we forgive. This is conditional. This can blur the blood of Jesus that you claim all the time that's gonna save you. Be careful. It only takes a sorry. Problem is, there is a spiritual pride in us, which means, no, I'm not going to tell it to her. No matter what. I'm not going to confess. I'm not going to expose my, myself to whatever. I'm not going to put myself. And the more you leave these things into you, that's an unconfessed. The more it rotten, the more it go uh, uh, dark and dark and dark, and then spiritual death comes. And the spirit of the Lord will not stay in that place forever. Um, uh, is, I think in Jacob or, or uh, James, when he say, you know, when uh, the, the sin, you know, come and it, it conceive and 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 uh, and bring death in the end. Can you find it, please, Pastor Alfie? If you know, it's in James. Uh, so that's not really a joke. That that simple thing. It can be very simple. You talk bad about someone. You, uh, uh, you know, play um, cunningly or did something, you know, and you think yourself smart and people do not know or God don't know or who knows and it's in the secret place. God knows and it starts to be um, sad in you and the, the more sad in you, the more you read in the word, read more and the more you feel like, what is wrong? Oh, let's go and listen to Abuna, whatever, or to the priest, whatever. And you think that these places can bring you to the place where you were before. The more you do it, the more, let's go for whatever, whatever you do. Uh, read a word, listen to music, do this, do that. And you're dying every day more and more. The spirit is, is unhappy. Like Sonia said, it's level. You grieve the Holy Spirit. You oppose, you resist the Holy Spirit. You quench the Holy Spirit. But there is a place where you, you search for the Holy Spirit and he will not be there. The Lord said in, I think, in the first of, or second chapter of Isaiah, when they, I don't, he hide his face. He don't want to hear to the prayer. Their Sabbath or their feast or anything. He hide their fa his face. So what should we be doing? You confess your sin instantly to the Lord. Go, you are into that place here going towards the cross for, and there is a big uh, distance between you and the cross to go there and ask for Lord to, to, to forgive you. But one step at a time and go to the cross and confess your sins. Or you're close to the cross and really your tears will wash you. Uh, all is need is I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Find someone today or this week or search your heart all that week. Who's that person that I should go and tell him I'm sorry? Brother, a sister, 
friend, spouse, workmate. Mm. Don't let your spirit rot without the Holy Spirit happy in you. Problem is you think you're smart, you're not. And I'm talking to believers. He say, for nothing in secret shall not be revealed, nor anything hidden will not be known and come to light. Everything will be exposed to everyone. Now there is two level, or maybe, of course, different level, but I'm going to talk about the things that God put in my spirit. Speak about, you know, you can be... Um, you can hurt someone by your word, with your word, once they are said. When you say some words, some hurtful word, they are either, uh, they are only be forgiven, but not forgotten. And men always have the problem that women do not forget. She come on the day one of their marriage and she tell, you told me this, I you did this, you did it. They keep, you know, memory for every single small big and uh, act or word said to them all their life this is the makeup of woman so if you're not a woman you're a man be careful of this woman will not for uh, uh, for forgive sorry will not forget what happened we always memorize what happened to him or to her unless you really find a way to let them the forgiveness come and the forgiveness can blur this but a word without you know you heard 25 years, 35 years, 100 years ago, the, that person, without really going and say sorry, um, it will be always unforgiven and will be always uh, hold against you. Problem is, there is another level of hurt. Uh, it's said that it's betrayal. When you betray one, you betray the trust. And the part which is, you know, hurting more in the betrayal the betrayal does not come from your enemy because your enemy will be always putting a, a distance or whatever when the, the betrayal comes from your friends, from your loved ones, from the closest one they can close to you. So here is like really a, a, a cut which can be piercing inside and, and a sorry sometimes can work, sometimes need more than that. And we're going to see a, a, an example of this. The person who's been pierced, he has to choose to let that things go or not. But I mean, you have to first come to that person, confess and ask sorry. The, the uh, uh, Judah, the Iscariot, you know, he betrayed Jesus and Peter did betray Jesus too. He was not less uh, uh, criminal or his crime was not less, you know. Um, but P uh, Judah never come to the Lord and say sorry. And his sins killed him even physically. He couldn't say sorry to the Lord, and he died even physically. We're talking about story from the Bible, not personal story. So be careful, guys. Don't hide anything in your heart and think it's okay. The blood of Jesus is going to work for you. Blood of Jesus, but you don't have the spirit of God in you, man. Be careful. Still talking to Christians, talking about believers, talking to, about, to ministers. It's only sorry how much it costs you. Jesus approached Simon in the last chapter uh, in on the book of John or second last or last, you know, and he came to him. Simon, come. Look after my shit. Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Three times. For a, for a person who denied him. I don't know what the feeling of Peter. He may say, open earth and swallow me. I don't want to stand in front of that truth and that light. He said in the beginning that people hate the light because they love their sin. They prefer the darkness. They prefer the witchcraft than the healing coming from God. The person who's been hurted here was the Lord and he came to restore Peter. And he is the only one to restore him to the position of trust because he can say forgive me or whatever and he'll be forgiven for the sin that he did but when you betray someone that level of trust is gone 
and sorry cannot really fix this. I was trusting you. I was trusting you. You were in a position that out of the 12 disciples, I picked you. And I say, I will give you the key. I didn't select John, who loved me and was so close to me until the cross. I picked you. You degrade yourself from that place. So not all of us will be able to do what Jesus did because there is, yeah, I can forgive you, sure, because it's conditional. If I don't forgive you, I will not be forgiven. But how can I restore the trust and give you the key of the kingdom of God again? That's another thing. It's only Jesus who can do it. Because you betrayed me with that. And in the morning, you were swearing, I will not do it. And I warn you, then, then the crow, crow the, the, the things will crow, and, and you will deny me three times. And it happened. So it's not like really without warning. It was with a good warning to restore him to that place of trust. It's only Jesus who can do that. And, and really, really people who are uh, into a level of, I don't know. I'm just talking things from the Bible. Now we're going to talk about uh, the arrogant heart because why you don't go and say sorry? Well, I shouldn't really share much of my personal life, but I had a father who, after he was very strong man, but he was able to say sorry. He was able, and Sonia nodding with her head, he was able to say sorry. Even that sorry was not, he was doing things, you know, very difficult sometimes. Uh, money wise decision and stuff but I mean like he was able to say and I, I praise God that he was like that in front uh, in my life so I can understand but here is the spiritual a spirit arrogance and this is here when there is no way the spirit of God will live with you he's leaving he's leaving you cannot acknowledge to God or to the person that you did or you betrayed him or her Everyone who is arrogant in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Can you hear that word? Abomination. Be assured that they will not go unpunished. Even if we repent, still the penalty is uh, will be uh, done for the person even if he repent like with David he didn't uh, let him uh, die but he have penalties on his life because he seen uh, something that provoked God so even if we repent and say sorry still the penalty will not be removed until I don't know until what but uh, there is a consequence for the we, we can discuss that thing. later, Sonia, because this is not going with uh, what I'm to saying about. Uh, God is not easily provoked, that's first. So for him to go to a place when you do a sin which really God was offended, it means you really uh, slept over your sin and you really he slept over, ah, I would imagine a year at least that David did that. You know, ignoring that he killed someone and put him to the front and all those things. It's not small sins, guy. And uh, and God had mercy on him. I said, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take that sin away. And he didn't die. That's because uh, soul for a soul, eye for an eye. If you kill, you should be killed. David was not killed. Now, I want you to see the, the beauty and the faces of those five brides and those other five brides. Children of God has a sign on them. And the sign is joy. People see the joy out of your face. It's unhidden. If your joy is not seen to others, then you have a problem. That's not the same. I always ask God what that means, you know, they didn't have oil into their lamp. What really that means? I'm going to speak about that. So when the spirit of God is dried in you, uh, and, and, and it means like there is not enough life in you, 
Like this person here, you can say that these are joyful all the time. The life of God, da, da, da. It's just like their face shine of glory and, and joy and happiness and life. You can see that. Well, those are in the darkened place, even they do the same ritual. So having a dry life when the Spirit of God is not shining on you and through you to others, your, your joy is not seen to the world, your satisfaction into your own life, you know, and always whinging and always having problems and whatever, that as if your God is, is dead or whatever, you know, this is, means you don't have oil enough. There's a person who had an oil. He was baptized by the Holy Ghost. But he let the Spirit of God quench, quench, quench till nothing. He's dry. He's dry, dry like a bone. So you squash the Holy Spirit, you suppress him, you ignore him, you evicted him. Don't ignore the, 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 the hinge or the, the, the nagging of the Holy Ghost. Don't. I was just I don't want to talk about the rubbishness on the internet. The, the guy is saying, uh, uh, what was it? The Holy Spirit do not convince you of sin. It convinced the world, not you and whatever. But but what you're talking about? An unhappy Christian is not, is not receiving the conviction of the Holy Spirit. So that person that you're talking about, he is no more a believer. He's from the world. He's a sinner. If the Holy Spirit cannot convict you, who can? Spiritual dryness are the symptom that these five version symptoms means like the sun, which uh, the things that they, because they have that, they have no joy. They have a, a, a Holy Spirit with quench, 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 they're nothing. We're going to talk about that we need the Holy Spirit into the rapture or into the changing of the nature of our mortal body to immortal. Spoke about few times in this. So don't want to lose more time. You need the Holy Spirit. You're born of the, you're going to turn to a spirit being who have different dimension. You can go from one place to another. You don't have this. So don't think you have a quenched Holy Spirit, squashed Holy, suppressed, just okay, okay, okay. Don't give me a headache, Holy Spirit. Just calm down. We have Jesus. Ignore. You ignore. You ignore what God is telling you. So what is the treatment for this situation? Because uh, this situation is really dangerous and it attacks many of the children of God and can be for years. Uh, it, it's not to be um, ignored or covered up or pretend it's okay. Don't do that to yourself. You need to be humble and ask help for someone confessing for your prayer someone pray with you and to be filled again unclean what that means to be filled again unclean like you have to clean this by either you say sorry to the lord and to the people that you offended them or betrayed them or uh, whatever you did you know the things which is making the holy spirit unhappy in you is unhappy and then be filled again with the holy ghost on clean and then you have a hunger and thirst for righteousness hunger and thirst for the righteousness and i love this picture because my i have one baby of mine he loves to eat, eat the other one he's not really a good blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they will be filled i'm gonna share with you this story and i really i don't like to share personal story in my preaching but this is to show you there is no one better and I'm not talking to you because I'm better. I'm, I'm talking to you because I've been into that place and I suffered. Two years when I came to Australia, two years, two full years, the Holy Spirit, I pray nothing, I don't hear nothing, as if I left him in New Zealand when I came. He didn't cross with me the border. Pray, read the word, that word, do this, do that. And then one day in my clinic, couple came their missionaries and their missionaries for 40 years when i met them and i said can i after the finish i said do you can i ask you a question now i said yeah i said do you still love the lord the same way you loved him 40 years ago i said yeah of course and i start to cry i lost my god i lost him i don't know where he is i don't know where i lost him or how 
or how to find him again. Two long years. So I'm not preaching you from Bible. I'm preaching you from a place when I've been there suffering. Why? Why God? What is it? Show me. Tell me. Help me. I cannot live with that kind of just life. And maybe I, I was very good financially on that time. Maybe I never, uh, I earned money like very, very good money on that year. I was not happy. I was very unhappy. But then Abuna from Egypt, Abuna Daniel came and a friend is one of the very uh, known people of God in Egypt. He came and visited Australia and a friend of mine took me to his meeting and, and I went and said, Abuna, I just don't, you know, I don't find God. I don't know where he is. I lost him. I lost him. I don't know. I can find him. And he said to me, don't you worry. If, if uh, it was sin, you will repent in a meeting like that. And I didn't know who I was. But these people, the missionaries came and when they picked their glasses, they give me a small booklet like that and they left it about the presence of God and left it for me and I read it and I just cried and cried and cried. And then, I don't know, I would not say instantly, but the spirit of God started to uh, come into me in a, in, a, in a format which I knew. But this two years of spiritual death or dryness is a horrible part of all my life. And I don't know if you've been for it, into it because of sin. Don't stay long. Because there is, David said, and your spirit do not take it. That and Zahu many don't take it. You know, when the lady do the wax, that's the word Tanzahu in English, in Arabic. That's not a gentle way that God going to take the spirit from a man or a woman. He open your appetite again and make you really uh, hunger for thirst and thirst for righteousness. And make you desire to come to all the glory. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for the righteousness, for they shall be filled. You cannot be pretend you're hungry. When you're not hungry, you're not hungry. As in the spirit realm, as in the natural realm. I don't want to eat. If you put in front of me whatever big feast, I, I, I don't want to eat. That's it. So don't go for long with that. If there is a sin, confess it, brother and sister. Come on your knees. Go find someone to talk to him about what is not right. Stop being spiritually pride, you know, because those people come to the clinic, to me, they're my patients. You know, that's not supposed to be like a doctor talking to his uh, patients and tell them things like this. But I was humble enough to say, do you still love after 40 years the Lord the same? And they said, yes. And I said, I'm jealous. I don't know what happened to me. They prayed for me. People which I do not know. So be humble. Don't let yourself think. If, if, if that joy is not seen on your face, there's something spiritually not right. Children of God, they shine. Those little ones who let this, the, the oil and the spirit squinch, 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 you know, diminished into them till the level that it's not enough to take them to the rapture or take them to the entry of meeting their king. This is when the oil is not enough. Be careful. Be very careful. Be hunger here and, and thirsty. I got those pictures for you to show you. Uh, see here, this little photo is, it look cute, but it's not good. Why is not good? Because that, that one is feeding or uh, giving water to that little one. And you think it's good enough? No, it's not. It's not. You want the water of the Lord to come upon you. Don't go for some man or woman to give you this. You may go humble yourself, someone to help you. But I mean like, go to the source, to the river. See, this guy is happy reading his Bible. He's happy. He's happy. He's not getting a sip from a YouTube internet uh, preaching of someone to, to pass your day so we can sleep. And the second day we have another day to face. That's what we do in our life. See that man? Don't leave yourself dying. Let's stretch your hand to the Lord, to the water, the rivers, to the bread of life. So the prayer was changed. 
He said, create in me a pure heart. Create in me a pure heart, O God. And renew a steadfast spirit within me. How many your spirits do not take it from me? It's changed now. He has another prayer. Holy Spirit, fill me with the holy fire. You have to ask that, but you don't ask for the power to come on a dirty heart. I was reading some, I don't know who said that the Holy Spirit fire do not burn. That's not true. Yeah, you had the, the, the bush of Moses unburn and whatever, but the Holy fire will burn ugly things in you. They'll burn them. Trust me. If the Holy Spirit come on a dirty vessel, that's not good for you. It's going to be very painful. So you need the cleansing of the Holy Spirit. And then the fire of God come on an empty vessel. It cannot be coming on you with your dirt. And ask him to baptize you in the spirit and in fire. Put your fire in me again, Lord. And that's my last slide for now. Uh, my heart say of, of you, seek his face. Your face, O oh Lord, I will seek. Seek the Lord while he's still there. Do not let the Holy Spirit be taken from you. So brother and sister, while I'm saying, you know, coming to the end of this uh, topic, it's up to you to continue to believe that the Holy Spirit can be taken from you or you're more confident the Holy Spirit cannot be taken from you. It's your choice. But don't be dull with your sins and don't sleep over them. And when God mighty need your repentance and say, sorry, Lord, how much more your brother and sister and the people, even after 40 years, you heard them go back. And I say, I was very insensitive. And the Holy Spirit remind me of this. I'm sorry. I took that. I did that. I said that and, and, and whatever, you know, and get yourself cleansed because the Holy Spirit fire, when it come on you, has to come on a clean vessel. The Father, I pray that the word which been spoken right now reach people's heart and it search your heart. Search my heart, O oh Lord. Search my heart. Search the short heart of every man and woman in front of you, either in here or in the internet listening to that preaching. Search us, O oh Lord, and show us when we were wrong and heal us. And come and anoint us more again and reuse us, Lord. We've been dull for a long time. Doesn't look different from, we're so hypocrite to pretend that we're Christian and we walk with you. And we die day after day. And we rot after day, day after day. So forgive us, Lord. And everyone has a sin that, you know, it's in your heart. It's moment now that you confess it to the Lord. Then if you need to go for your brother or sister, go. Don't let your spirit pride kill you. Gonna kill you. Gonna kill you. So pray that in the name of Jesus, that everyone will humble himself or herself and go and ask that fire will come on a clean vessel, on a vessel which will be tamed by you, Lord. I pray that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.